Hi. Welcome to the Animo Magazine YouTube channel. This is Albert de los Santos. Today, we're going to be chatting with the with two young guys who will be joining the next season of the UAAP basketball team. The arrival of these two brothers marked the aggressive rebuild that coach Derek or Mano to some other people, Pumaren, has been doing to his return in Taft. Many years ago, Coach Derek was the coach of the DLSU basketball team, and now he's back. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Michael and Benjamin Phillips. Hello, everybody. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having us. Just to start it off uh, properly, uh, can you tell our viewers about yourself? Let's start with uh, with uh, Benj. Oh, oh. Uh, so, Kosi uh, Benjamin Phillips, uh, in Ohio, uh, U.S. Um, I had my undergrad uh, at Miami University, uh, business marketing. Um, Tapos uh, played basketball, volleyball, so high school. Um, then I decided to focus on business and school after high school. And then uh, obviously now I'm, I'm enrolled in uh, Dallas South, but I was a master's uh, MBA uh, with, the, with the goal of getting my DBA, my, my doctorate in business. Um, so I'm the oldest of, of the three Philip sons. Uh, we have uh, two two loving parents, <coughs> Benjamin Phillips Jr., uh, who uh, who played basketball overseas, played D1 in college here in the States. Uh, he also is a, is a former pastor. And then my mother, Dr. Sharon Phillips, uh, who got her doctorate in, in psychology, and uh, she's our, our Filipina. So that's a little bit about me, but I'll turn it over to, to my brother. Yes, hello, everybody. I'm going to see Michael Phillips. Um, I'm going to say that I've been Ohio for me. Uh, I'm excited to be Ohio. Uh, very excited to be here. Um, I actually got to graduate from high school uh, this year. And so I'll be an uh, incoming freshman for the South. Um, I'm 19 years old. Uh, and uh, right, like Ben said, you know, um, our mom and dad are very, very uh, big back of that life. And so um, very excited to be here. We love everything in South. Uh, I feel like uh, it was our destiny to be here at the South and talk about it. So um, I'm always lagging from the side about uh, waiting from Bagu South and the third Bagu the South. And generally um, being a part of such a historical magazine here and in the magazine. Very excited. That's nice. Um, your lineage, line, let's talk about your, your Filipino family background. Where exactly is, is your relatives from in the Philippines? Like a Cebu for I'm from India. Uh, Cebu. Have you been to Cebu? Got <laughs> wow. Wow, you love Cebu. It's a little bit warm there because it's an island in the middle of the ocean. But it's it's a it's a destination for people who just want to have a vacation. It's a small Manila with a nice beach resorts about 30 to 45 minutes from the city and the city is just like manila a lot of fun good food i i i just wish that you can you can go to cebu one of these days but have you traveled in in manila in the philippines have you been to boracay bacolod Oh, yes. Dumaguete has very good food. Tagaytay is one of the cooler places in Manila. But you should visit a lot more places. Uh, the Philippines, traveling to these cities in, in Manila will allow you to learn more about your heritage. So, now, next question. How did La Salle find you? Who were the first people from Asal that you talked to or met with? 
before I know um you um time uh they reached out to us uh Sir Danny Siegel uh the PBA legend Dynamite Danny <laughs> uh him and um uh uh Man or Banjo Banjo Albano and Albano um they actually reached out to uh to me and my brother first uh when I was in high school I had a Filipino uh teammate uh, my high school team. And uh, we sort of talked to each other, and they and we sort of told each other, oh, hey, I'm Filipino. Oh, we're Filipino. We have Filipino roots. And so uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, Filipino leagues and, and, and games going around in, in, in uh, my high school. And so um, it was kind of out of the blue. I mean, uh, they, re they reached out to us, and um, they actually came all the way down uh, to our house and, and you know, sat with our parents and sat with us and had, had very great conversations. And so... Um, I mean, they, they had so much, so much effort and, and recruiting us and just, just treating us like family ever from uh, the very first start. Was it a difficult decision to even consider going to the Philippines? Oh, and, oh, oh. and was oh. La Salle your first choice? And first and only choice? My my Ipang schools did the states na nil kupin sa amin. Um, at uh, nung nung lumaki ako po, hindi ko hindi namin talaga alam kung sa Filipino roots namin. And so um, ang nane ko or nane namin, she was the only one who actually went to the Philippines and experienced it. So um, sobrang nani ni ba ako namin sa mga ano sa overseas and things like that. But um, it was definitely, uh, definitely a different experience. Uh, but uh, then you can kind of tell more about how uh, sort of decision and everything kind of came along. Oh, uh, kasi yung uh, kapapamilya ko, uh, we were kind of confused and, and, and overwhelmed uh, from si, uh, yung decision. Uh, kasi we had never went to the Philippines and we didn't know much about Filipino basketball or Filipino schools. Uh, kaya, para sa si Michael, we were looking at Maravain U.S., you know, D1 school. And so we were kind of figuring out which one he wants to go to here. And then, uh, obviously, when, you know, they had a South call, they were our, our first outlet sa Philippines. And so when we took our first, you know, recruitment trip to the Philippines, uh, we kind of fell in love with, with De La Salle, with the school, with the culture, with uh, the academics. And, uh, you know, other schools tried to try to reach out, but we were already, you know, kind of kind of sold with LaSalle. And so we, we already made our decision as soon as we even, you know, came to the airport. <laughs> nice. Who, who was the first, uh, who were the first uh, LaSalleites or LaSalleans that uh, you talked to? Uh, so, yeah, we were able to meet um, with a lot of those managers and um uh, they they were very very welcoming. We also met with some of the coaches there, uh, uh, with Sir Danny's team, and um, and so I think the most memorable uh, decision for us uh, we made on to you dinner because I'm gonna see the late boss ECJ, and so we were able to to meet him and actually speak with him uh, before he unfortunately passed. And so that's why you know our decision is even more uh, aggressive for the South. To see, we want to win a championship for Bossy TJ. So one more for Bossy TJ. That kind of sold our our decision because he was very, very welcoming, very gracious, and to, to host us. What about Brother Bernie Oka? Did you meet him? Have you met him? Yes, Brother, yes. <laughs> brother Bernie is. Uh, he, he's actually one of my my very good friends now. He's a, he's a very very good mentor. Uh, I, I respect him a lot, and he actually you know is is part of the reason why I'm here because uh, he you know made up goal. Uh, Medal Kogol is for the scholastic achievement, you know, more so than some of the other things is that I want to get my MBA and my DBA on a business. And so working with Brother Bernie is since he's helping me have a, have a very specific track, putting the right, you know, mentors, uh, the satellites or, or the salients in my corner to kind of make sure that my school and, and my basketball and my volleyball kind of all flows together. But Brother Bernie is, is, is one of the best, you know, the science that I've, that I've met so far. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and he can, he's very good at motivating with his, just with his, with his words. Um, I've, I've heard him speak motivating the athletes. And each time it was really impresses me 
Ang galing-galing magsalita ni Brother Bernie. Well, anyway, he is the new president. I'm sure you know that. He's the new president of uh, De La Salle University. It's long overdue, but finally he made it. And he accepted the, the role. Uh, good for you guys. At least you have somebody up there to look to help you each step of the way. Anyway, next question. You've, you've done, I'm sure you've done a tour of La Salle. I've seen your uh, photograph of both of you in front of the La Salle Archer. And what was your, what's your initial impression of the school? Uh, is it comparable to what you have in, in, the, in, in the States? Yes, actually, um, when we first went there and we, we saw everything, I really loved how the community feel. It had a very close and familial uh, vibe to it. And, you know, everybody was very friendly. Actually, we were able to uh, tour Kasamis, uh, with uh, Brother Bernie. And uh, everybody passed him with, you know, mono and everything and, and wishing him a magandang hapon. And so, um, uh, and uh, there was like a very good uh, energy there and, um, and, and with such a sort of a large school like De La Salle, you kind of expect the students to sort of be on their own and it's not really be that close. Um, sometimes, meantime, that's the case deep as the states. Pero sa La Salle, um, the ko talaga yung closeness among uh, the Salians, and I just really wanted to be a part of that. But as I can, I just, I remember your first feeling, well, uh, it was just very, very hot <laughs> compared to, uh, compared to the Beatles and States, because uh, you, uh, I wear uh, suits, uh, auto, auto, but I saw your business classes to see, you know, if I'm a business major, if I'm a business school, I want to actually look like a business man, so I, I wear suits every day to class, um, but if you don't Sung out, I was like, "Oh my goodness, it is so it's so hot here." And so I think that uh, that was kind of my my awakening to not just El Salvador but the Philippines in general. Well, as as I'm sure you know that Filipinos are generally very friendly. You can approach any Philippine any any student on campus, say hi, or just ask them what you need, and all of them will be very helpful. By the way, after meeting Brother Bernie, where did you did you did, did he treat you for lunch or dinner <laughs> in the in the brother's house? Uh, I actually I think um, he had a very busy schedule that day. I know he was very very jam packed, but he actually was able to make time for us, which we're very grateful for. And so uh, hopefully we'll be the ones to treat him. Because <laughs> uh, we uh, our first meeting, because uh, I'm gonna see Brother Bernie uh, was with Brother Bernie. Uh, shout out Sir Nong, uh, Michael Kalanov, uh, shout out to Brother Ray. And so we kind of met him in Brother Ray's office. And so that was our, our first meeting. Now, I, I mentioned that because, uh, well, right now it's under construction, but the brother's, ho brother's house, which is on the top floor of one of the buildings of the Sal, serves very good, delicious food. Because one of the brothers there is an excellent chef. So uh, I've had about several meals there and each one was really fantastic. One of these days, you sh they should invite you to <laughs> dine there. Can't okay. Um, as you well know, also, Coach Derek or Coach Manong, as he is called, comes from a family of basketball players and coaches. From their dad, the legendary Pilo Pumarin, to his siblings, Franz, the legendary Franz Pumarin, and Lindo Pumarin. Their coaching styles are similar, but not identical. However, they usually play fast. Does this suit your game or your style of playing? Oh, well, um, actually, po, feeling namin na exact po talaga sa amin. Uh, dahil po, uh, gaming dalawa, more uh, energy players, gusto namin, ibinigay lahat ng energy namin para sa team. At, um, and just, just really, uh, our biggest factor, uh, just coming from my dad, is defense-oriented and just hard-working basketball. Um, 
I know Nam and Mimi being super superstars and, and ball hogs and things like that. And so we really like to do the dirty work of the team and um, just having a system uh, under under someone like Coach Derek or Coach Monon. Mon, uh, it really, really is very attractive to us. And, and we really, I mean, every day we sort of watch the film and try to learn as much as we can because um, his system really, really is effective against uh, any team, I believe. So. Uh, if we really get all the pieces together and, and get our chemistry right, uh, I, I'm very, very uh, trusting and, and, and uh, I believe in, in everything about this program. To see energy players, energy players, players come in. Uh, I'm a Marie Dokong, PBA player, uh, Saruti Hatchfield, Saruti Hatchfield. Uh, that goes, you know, just very, very anything that you need to do for the team, whether it's just rebounds, whether it's energy off the bench, whether it's, you know, getting, getting water for the other teammates. That's what our role, that's what we're prepared to do. Uh, to see, uh, but to see Coach Derek, uh, Sabin, yeah, to mark that ball, to mark that ball, to mark that ball, uh, out of, out of practice, uh, to see it's very, very high intensity, discipline, high energy, and, uh, a lot of goals. That's exactly what uh, this De La Salle team needs, especially with modern, main, you know, recruitment, modern main talent that we just brought in. Is we can be unified under one uh, discipline, one code, and uh, I think that Coach Derek will, will definitely provide that 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 leadership role for us. But I'm sure you've seen some films where takbunan takbusila from 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 start up to finish. That's yeah. their, you know. Uh, And they've been very successful, especially Coach France with that system. Anyway, with with both of you the t- on the team, LaSalle is turning out to be a tall team. And so with the other teams, especially Ateneo. I suppose you guys know of the rivalry on the court between Ateneo and LaSalle in all sports, not just basketball, taekwondo, football. Have you watched any of the La Salle Ateneo basketball games? Oh, well, because uh, I'm going to see Al Jimmy Malesho, uh, former captain. Uh, I used, he sent me a lot of uh, the previous game film when they went on their uh, UAP uh, championship run. So I would watch, you know, see Ben Amala, Jason Perkins, Jared uh, you know, Dane. You know, so I would watch, you know, the mayhem uh The mayhem defense. Uh, I know that a lot of that was from you know see out in Iowa and some other coaches, but I know that you know that mayhem defense and that fast-paced Filipino basketball style. Uh, you know, Coach Derek's modern press. I think that that's really going to be a uh, going to be a, a good tool this coming UAP season. So I know that uh, that's another reason why we have a lot of, of players is because we need to make sure that we have a lot of bodies on the court because we're going to be running nonstop. So if you're tired, you sub out. You have somebody else that's a fresh body. So it's not about maximizing playing time. It's not about you know trying to who can score the most. It's who can play the most pressurized defense all you know 40, 50, 60 minutes of that game. You mentioned a lot of names, um, Ben Imbala, Jeron Teng, but even before them, there were players like uh, Lim Embeng. Who scored 64 points? His, his jersey is hung in the number number 11, the box or 14, number 14. 14, 14, 14. Yes, and if the if I if I'm if I can remember right, he scored about 64 points in a game, and there was no three point plays yet. There was no three point shots, and but he was shooting from beyond the arc, and the only way the He was a, he was able that they were able to stop him. Stop him was when a member of the opposing team hit him on the face as he was taking a shot. That's the only that that well that was in in the seventies when you know. <laughs> the, well, um, yeah, and um, what about Ateneo? Ateneo is going to be a a strong team. Uh, with their experience at Gilas and all that. Uh, what do you feel about Ateneo? So I think that the depth of the spotlight is on Ateneo, uh, especially with, with Coach Tab. 
uh, with you know some of the Gilas players there. They're they're definitely you know in the limelight or they're they're getting the most practice right now and rightfully so. The Gilas team is doing a fantastic job. So you know props to Coach Gavin and the rest of the national team, especially Balti. Uh, you know who's, who's doing fantastic there as well. Um, Beto, you know Barcelona. We're we're not necessarily concerned with anybody else outside of Tap Tap. Right, we're, we're focusing on our team, our style, our discipline every single day. And so we're trying to block out all of the outside noise. And right now we're focusing on learning Coach Derek's plays, Coach Derek's, you know, mindset, uh, because we think that we can contend with anybody in the country. And we definitely, um, definitely go into the season. I am not going to underestimate any team. Uh, we don't want to put too much focus on my Ibang teams because that would take away from Sariri Nami or from ourselves. And so... Um, simply, uh, I would say very, very they're very strong. Uh, simply, uh, experience, and so uh, I'm sure it's going to be a very good season, a very good matchup. And so uh, I just believe that for the entire UAD community, it just should spring so much excitement and energy. And so we definitely concluded uh, in definitely don't want to underestimate them and. and uh, but at the same time, we really uh, want to focus uh, more so on ourselves and how we can be best prepared for uh, that, That's nice to hear. However, let, let me share with you um, the feelings of the alumni community. And that is, matalo na sa lahat, wag lang sa Ateneo. In other words, it's all right if you lose against the other teams, NU, UE, UST, as long as you win against Ateneo. <laughs> well, that is from an alumni. Of course, your coach might say something different, but, you know, yan ang alumni community. Um, Michael can play five seasons in with DLSU. What about you, Benjamin? Uh, meron kong tatlong seasons. Uh, Tatlo. Si, uh, Hindi naglalaro uh, sa basketball sa states sa undergrad. Uh, so, you know, meron kong yung uh, taon until uh, 25, uh, diba? So, I'm 22. I just turned 22 uh, sa April to April 10th. Uh, so, tatlong seasons. Okay, that's good. That, that's enough time for you to finish your MBA and start off with your PhD. Very nice. <clears throat> uh, many LaSalle basketball players, as you know also, joined the PBA shortly after their stint with LaSalle. And many are doing well right now. Benj, after your stint with the LaSalle, what are, what are your plans? Is it basketball or business or the academe? Uh, but so I can, you know, uh, your first goal is to finish my, my PhD, right? My, my doctorate. So no matter what else happens, uh, you know, I, I made a promise to, to my parents, to uh, my family that I, I'm going to finish my, my doctoral degree. So that's, that's my first goal, uh, to see, you know, to be that I go, uh, that was, you know, that was her goal for her family. So she became, you know, the first doctorate in her family. So I want to follow her footsteps. Especially with you know, uh, you know, trying to follow you know the Filipino mother. Um, but you know, if, if there is an opportunity or if there is an experience to play a PBA or alongside my brother anywhere else or whatever happens, I would you know graciously be open to it. Um, especially because uh, you know I also really like volleyball at the same time as well. So if there's a chance that I could you know play some volleyball, play some basketball, um, you know, and, and kind of see where that where that meshes together, um, then so far I'm excited to go you know um, for that. Um, but again, the first goal is to finish my MBA, finish my, my PhD, my DBA, uh, because I, I want to actually have a, you know, have a story that I can tell the other student athletes that education, you know, if, if, if you do want to go to the pro leagues, that's perfectly fine. And that's how a lot of people feed their families. And that's a good goal. But education to me is number one in the entire world. That's nice. That's nice to hear. Um, Benjamin, I, I've read through your profile and I'm very impressed. Uh, uh, you are, I'm, I'm sure Brother Bernie will be very proud of you because you 
multiply the Lasallian athlete who does well in school, does well in sports, multi-sports, and uh, and I just went through your book, The Lone Wolf Mentality. I haven't read it, but uh, who are you? Who is your target? The millennials on how to, to take care of their finance? Tell me more about the book. Yeah, absolutely. So the book uh, based on uh, Genesis 49, 27. So the uh, favorite scripture book, uh, Genesis 49, 27 states that Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours his prey. In the evening, he provides his spoil. And so I took that, that biblical lesson and applied it to uh, my own personal life because uh, see, I want to be the one to go out and actually, you know, conquer the crops, understand how to, you know, make things happen and then bring that back to, to my family so everyone can reap, you know, uh, everything what I what I've sown. And so for the book, it's it's about, you know, millennials, college students, people that are just starting out in business and understanding just the basic fundamentals of, you know, managing your money, how to be successful in, you know, undergrad and, and anything you're doing in college, whether it's study tips whether it's how to actually make connections with your professors and your classmates, as well as any internships or job opportunities, how to maximize your workplace effectiveness and make your value stand out. So whether you're in the Philippines, you're interning uh, at SM, or you're interning anywhere else, or you're here in the States, and you're looking to start your undergrad or even going to grad school, there's different things that you need to understand, not just intellectually, conceptually, but also how to manage your finances to make sure that you understand every fiduciary step of how to maximize uh, kind of where you're at in your current stage. So that's what that book talks about. There's more wolf tips in there. Uh, there's different scriptures in there that I kind of wanted to put in there uh, because I, I my, my, our father is a pastor, so we grew up uh, understanding a, a lot of that, you know, how to apply that to our practical lives. So that's what that, that book is about. Great. You should bring... You, you should bring hundreds of that when you come over to the Philippines and sell that in the bookstore. <laughs> yeah, people will buy that. I, I, it, it's, it's a very interesting uh, concept. And uh, I'll, I will try to get a copy. Okay. And, and, and you, Michael, Tagalog, Korean, Spanish, and Japanese, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a Korean girlfriend or Japanese girlfriend? <laughs> And so gusto gusto talaga malaman sa mga ibang cultures because there's so much I can learn from. Um, like the like the Philippines, for example, just their hard work, uh, their discard day. I mean, everything what it means to be a Filipino and high me adversity sa buhay, dule dule, laban laban, and so um, just understanding that uh, through the language, the language can tell you so much about who the Filipino people are, and so every language I acquire and I study, um, I'm able to really uh, cherish the cultural values and, and, and try my hardest to implement them in my life. And so um, this is definitely one of my favorite passions to do and just communicate with everybody uh, that I can. And so uh, that's definitely something that I love to do. Well, I'm sure you know that the Filipino culture and language has been heavily influenced by the Spanish. Uh, we, were, we were under the Spanish rule, rule for, for over a century. So even our language is similar to Spanish and uh, even our culture. Cooking, you also cook. You know that uh, when you come to the Philippines, you'll be staying in the athletes' quarters and they have a fantastic kitchen there. Uh, of course, they have a chef there and a nutritionist, but I'm sure you can practice your, your skills there. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what 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 do you cook? Um, so I'm actually po um sinasubukan ako magluto ng mga ibang uh, Filipino foods. Uh, yung chefs sa uh, uh, athlete compound namin. Um, they're try they're teaching me how to cook uh, sinigang, tonola, and pancit. And so uh, 
just ever since I first tasted, uh, I, I've had Filipino food, um, doing sa Philippines, uh, ibang klase talaga, maraming flavor, uh, ibang klase ng awesome. <laughs> sobrang masarap. So um, I'm actually uh, trying to really uh, uh, cook a lot of the Filipino foods and because and, they're very healthy as well. And so um, especially the mga, I know, mga sabaw, the mga soups, they're <laughs> definitely something that's close to my heart. <laughs> Have you tried the adobo? Yes, yes oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you, you, you should perfect that. Yes, <laughs> Uh, we also enjoy balut in Toyo. <laughs> really? You enjoy balut? Yes, but uh, 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 the Vita Vicentia family, they are the ones to introduce us to that. Uh, they're like, um, if you haven't had this yet, you're not a Filipino. And so, <laughs> so we were able to experience that. And I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yung process, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's best eaten in the dark. That's what I can say. <laughs> and you're taking marketing, uh, Michael, you're taking marketing. Um, do you know that La Salle is the premier business school in the Philippines? Some of the top graduates of La Salle are now the captains of the industry. Um, if you go through the the Past issues, past issues of Animal Magazine, you will see all the, the, the successful Lasallians who are in the business community. It won't go wrong. You too, uh, uh, Bench. Uh, you will be proud of your MBA and your PhD once you finish that in La Salle. Yes, absolutely. Okay. L let me put your game into perspective. Among the current NBA players, who do you look up to or who plays the game similar to yours? Basketball, I would say, um, uh, first, I have a couple. First, I would say Montrez Harrell. Uh, he, he's just such, I mean, he's a hard worker. He's a dog. Um, he really provides that energy and motor for the team. Uh, and, and he's, you know, he's not flashy. He's not anything fancy. He's definitely added to his game, but uh, each, every game in and out, he really provides that hard nose basketball for the team. And, and um, just being able to, to provide so much energy for the team and, and get them going uh, is something that I really, really idolize. And he can do it just by rebounds, block shots, defense. And so um, he's definitely one of the players that I look up to. Uh, but so I can, I'm a Rachel Cole NBA player, so all time, uh, see Tim Duncan. Uh, so I know that he's, he's definitely a lot taller than I am, but he was the number one player that I watched growing up just because, you know, he's the big fundamental. He, uh, you know, back to the basket or if you shoot in the mid range, you know, he just gets the job done and he meshes with the team. And so I see, you know, uh, that, that kind of play style fitting in as well. And then even now, um, looking at, uh, I know he's sort of a slept on name, but I watched him a lot at Georgetown uh, and, and he was one of my favorite players uh, was Otto Porter Jr. And so Otto Porter Jr. I think has a really, really nice play style um, that you know I kind of want to you know, look at, especially even now with the Lakers, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, you know, so some of these, some of these guys that are, you know, kind of stretch boards or, or trying to play the three, you know, but are a little bit bigger, you know, that's kind of what, what my goal was trying to get to. Personally, my favorite player is Dennis Rodman. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. I, I love his defense. He's tough, but not dirty. I, I noticed that. He's tough, but not dirty. Well, sometimes, once, once in a while, he gets pretty dirty. But he was a tough defender. I think one, a, a player from La Salle played similar to his. And that was Jerwin Gako. Uh, he's, a, he's a player of coach uh, Franz Pomarin. And do you know that everything, every team that he has joined uh, before La Salle, during La Salle, in his PBA career, every team that he played for became champions. After PBA, he was it was already he joined another league 
and they too became champions. I don't know whether he's a lucky charm, but you know, he's not very big, he's not very tall. Uh, he's really a stretch uh, four, but uh, yeah, he played well. Anyway, going back to, to you, um, I'm sure you guys will enjoy your stay. When, when are you planning to come back to the Philippines to join the team practices? It's actually meant to Malabo book that helps my lockdowns and um, the coronavirus. So we're just awaiting uh, until it is very safe. You know, we've uh, already not been Chempre is the safety of everybody in the yep. entire Philippines. So uh, we're not sure just yet, Mo, but uh, we're just we're just waiting for, for our call. Besides, there's no schedule yet on when the next UAP season, basketball season will start. Yes, sir. It's, it's sort of up in the air as well. And so we're just hoping, crossing our fingers, but uh, Chef, we want to uh, have the safety of everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure you will enjoy your stay in the Philippines. And, I'm, I, I, and I can guarantee that as soon as you step your step onto the LaSalle campus, you will immediately feel the love and support of the LaSallean com community. Prepare yourself to be swarmed by fans ask, <laughs> asking for your autographs and pictures. You know, this is from an old guy. Be nice to them and they will support you all the way. Um, thank you very much for this time. Um, any final words to your fellow Lasallians and uh, Kababayan in the Philippines? Thank you very much. Paalala, ang Immunomax at Immunomax Forte ay hindi gamot at hindi dapat gamitin panggamot sa anumang uri ng sakit.